Serato and Raku is a rookie no more, and that's what made his win in Salt Lake City extra special, in my opinion, at least. Don't forget, last year was Serato's very first year on the circuit, and so what do you think his expectations were coming into 2023? Your first year on the circuit, you're not seriously going to think that you can win Boulder World Cups and Lee World Cups and win the seasons. This was his first win following being declared a favorite, not just for World Cups, but also for the Olympics. And so after having gone through that training season and the off season, this was his validation that all that stuff that he worked through, through the winter time was worth it. He did the right thing. He managed to get a win and his gold medal was validation that his strategy worked and he's on the right path. Now, Serato wasn't the only favorite to win in Salt Lake City. In fact, that was kind of the theme of the weekend was favorites taking the golds that we predicted them to earn. Natalia Grossman, of course, I've always kind of said that she is a bit of a 1B just behind, of course, Yanya Garnbrett, who is the 1A. Anytime Yanni Garnbrett's not at a comp, Natalia Grossman is who you should have your money on. And she proved why this weekend, even with a limp in finals, she managed to take that gold medal ahead of Brooke and ahead of Oriane and ahead of, interestingly, French, well, I'll say upstart maybe because it's been a while since they were on the circuit, Nale Mignon, who passed the eye test this weekend. I don't think this was a fluke performance. I think based on how well they did in the qualifiers and the hard problems in semis and the easier problems in finals, I think this is a name you should be watching out for, not just for finals, but I think one or two more medals in the 2024 bouldering season. On the speed side, you probably could have predicted the winners as well. It is, of course, Sam Watson and Emma Hunt taking the gold medals. On the men's side, I think he was a favorite because, well, there were no Indonesian climbers at all, and the best of the Chinese team wasn't there either. Matteo Zerloni, of course, has a world championship gold, but if we discount that, then Sam is the only former gold medalist to be in that field, and I think that put him on top. For Emma Hunt, no Alexandra Miras loss, so that clears the way for everybody. But again, no Indonesian women and a lot of the Chinese team wasn't there either, so it was hers for the taking. And what's special about that, not just being her first gold medal personally and the first female speed gold medal in history, it was also just the first speed gold medal from the Americas, from the Western Hemisphere, since 2008 when Lucella Blanco won a gold medal in Trento, Italy. And we're going back far enough where that competition was classic speed. That wasn't on the current speed wall, right? So a big win, not just for Emma, not just for the USA, but for the Western Hemisphere and the Americas all together. Now, I'm no fan of parachuting in just famous people to be co-commentators, even when they have like no connection with the sport of competitive climbing. But I got to admit, I'm like most of you. I actually really enjoyed having Alex Honnold on the microphone for a bunch of the boulder rounds and the speed rounds. His voice is real nice. He's a funny guy and he had a lot of insights and I think the chemistry with Matt, which allowed Matt to become kind of the voice of knowledge, uh, was a really cool balance and I actually enjoyed it for this event. Not necessarily something I would want every time because I think novelty can wear off and I think a lot of what we enjoyed from this competition was the novelty of someone who was a little bit ignorant to how competition climbing works. His questions about the rules and about the scoring and about the format, all of that was interesting if only because he was asking a lot of the questions that some of us might ask why this why that why is there so little money right oh this looks dangerous all those kind of remarks that felt very down to earth it kind of felt like he was one of us calling out camera angles is another great example matt's probably not going to do that he works with those people all the time so i thought alex's commentary was refreshing and fun in a unique way that you might not get from a lot of other people i don't necessarily hope you have somebody like that every time i would prefer someone that can bring some genuine insight to competition climbing to help balance out Matt. But this showed how a change in humor, a change in style and perspective, and being a little bit irreverent was actually a really good time. And I got to give a shout out to my boy, Albert Oak, who in the speed finals, this is so unreasonable. In the speed finals, Albert Oak and Alex Honnold are on the mic together, and Albert Oak just straight up asks him, "How many speed climbers can you name off the top of uh, off the top of your head?" I thought that was 
bonkers thing to ask on a live broadcast. Mad disrespectful, but I was honestly laughing out loud. That was a hilarious moment. Alex gives the mic back to uh, to Mac Room. Super funny. Anyway, I did genuinely enjoy having Alex Honnold on the microphone, and I hope that opens everybody up to maybe what types of co-commentary or commentary they might actually enjoy when watching climbing. So all in all, that was actually a really fun element this weekend. Speaking of fun moments, here's your clip of the comp. Now, if there weren't so many funny Alex Honnold lines, I think this would be what everyone was already sharing. But here it is. It's going to be in the men's boulder semifinal. And the timestamp is one hour, 30 minutes and 40 seconds. It's the Yoshiyuki ping pong. It's hilarious to watch. The commentators have a great time with it too. So go check it right now on YouTube, men's bouldering semifinals. Now, what episode would this be if we didn't have a little graph moment? So Graph Watch, which should probably be retitled like a great Graph Watch, because we only really look so far at graphs of like the best athletes in their disciplines ever. But what we're going to check out today is the women's bouldering graph, which you've already seen before. But with Natalia's win, we get a little update. Natalia Grossman has now tied Shauna Coxie for fifth place in the total gold medal count in bouldering. Again, that's a combination of World Cups and World Championship uh, gold medals. But Natalia Grossman has now tied British climber Shauna Coxie at 11. One more win, and I bet she can do it this season. She's going to overtake Shauna for that fifth spot to be one of the top five most gilded female boulderers in the history of competitive climbing. And before we finish with the ranks, one thing that I thought for sure I was going to be talking about before this event was the venue. And as it turns out, so long as you got a roof over your head, you put up some curtains to hide the, the shabby warehouse element of all of it. It turns out you can have a great comp that everybody enjoys watching and pretty much nobody is going to be talking about the venue if the climbing is good the wall looks good the audio is excellent by the way the crowd noise was way better than what we had in wujang i think this comp went off without a hitch and even though it was a facility downgrade from the pioneer park of the last couple of years and there was probably very good reasons for that this just goes to show that you can put a world cup in a grimy old warehouse and if you dress it up well enough it actually looks pretty good i think all of us ifsc included can take a lesson from that. We don't necessarily have to be so ambitious about the setting of our venues. So long as they work really well, they got a roof over our heads, there's no drips onto the climbing wall, you can hold a top tier World Cup that is entertaining and beloved by all the people watching. And you can do it in a shabby part of town. And to wrap it up, let's do a check-in on where the ranks stand for speed climbing and bouldering for the 2024 World Cup season. In women's speed, Natalia Kaluchka has moved up a spot and her sister, Alexandra Kaluchka, up to to tie in first place, both with a second and a third. In third place, Emma Hunt, fourth place, Lee Juan Deng, and in fifth place, Alexandra Mirosla has dropped four spots because she didn't compete in this weekend's event. In sixth place, Gijen Zi. In seventh place, Jimin Zhang is down four. In eighth place, Meng Li Zhang. In ninth, Piper Kelly. And in tenth, Jing Yu Fan. For the men's speed, Sam Watson is on top now after his win this weekend. Matteo Zerloni in second. Peng Wu has dropped from the first spot down to third. In fourth, Kevin Amon off his incredible bronze medal this weekend. In fifth, Noah Bracci with a giant jump up 29 places. In sixth, Zach Hammer. In seventh, Kira Malkatabin. Eighth, Ludovico Fasali. Ninth, John Brosler. And tenth, Jing Ji Huang. In the women's boulder, Yanya Garnbrett holds strong in first place, but she's got some company. Natalia Grossman, with her win this weekend, joins her in a tie for first place and 1,000 points. Oceana McKenzie's final appearance jumps her up to third place, and Anon Matsufuji is in fourth. Mao Nakamura in fifth, and new on the leaderboard, Oriane Bertone in sixth place, tied with Camilla Maroney. In eighth place, Gilou Lo and Nyla Mignon tied and in 10th place, Madison Richard drops three spots to that final spot in the top 10. In the men's boulders, Serato Enraku is on top, and he's knocked off his teammate Tomoa Narasaki down to second place. Tomoa's brother, Meichi Narasaki, is up to third, and in fourth, Jakob Schubert after his finals appearance this weekend. In fifth, Toby Roberts. Sixth, Jan Luca Posh. Seventh, American Colin Duffy. In eighth place, Hannes Van Dyssen has dropped five after not appearing in this World Cup. In ninth, Soda Amagasa jumps 20 spots. And rounding out the top 10 is Sam Abazou of France. 
And that's it for Salt Lake. Next up is the OQS, the Olympic Qualifier Series. We're going to Budapest and Shanghai to decide who the next 10 Olympians are going to be. So make sure you like and subscribe to this channel for more content about those events. And of course, you can always support the Patreon or leave a super thanks if you want to donate. And lastly, if you made it all the way to the end, make sure you join the Plastic Weekly Discord because it's people like you who we want talking every single competition, hanging out, shooting the shit about what's going on in the world of competition climbing. Thank you so very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.